good guys welcome back to the channel and if you are new to my channel my name is stephanie and i am the host of the milk carton series so today is sunday which means crime story sunday happens and this is where we talk about crime stories that have touched the entire world doesn't matter where it is we will talk about it because it's good to talk about it so this story guys is one of those stories that will make you want to grab your siblings your children your nieces your nephews and hold them just a little bit tighter this story happened in the uk and it involves two siblings and the crazy thing about these two they are having an incestual relationship and they're half siblings so they have a different father but the same mother we have 35 year old sarah brassop and we have 39 year old brandon mclean probably pronouncing their names wrong but i don't care because they're pure trash when it comes to this story anyways <laughs> i don't care about pronouncing their names correctly but this case involves two sweet teenagers 13 year old blake and 14 year old tristan who were brutally killed by their parents and what's even crazy is it's like you're my mom but at the same time you slept with my uncle so now you have these children and they not only have just these two beautiful babies they had four other children whom in which they tried to also kill. So their story begins as Sarah being Sarah and my Brandon being kids. They were in and out of care. I think in the UK they call foster care in care versus how we say the terminology here in the US. If you're from the UK and you're watching these videos, let me know down below. I'm really curious about that. But nonetheless, they both came from a chaotic background. They had a single mother and they have also six other siblings. So ironically, the mother, of course, she has four different child's fathers. Not that it matters, but when you're a single parent and you're living in dysfunction, sometimes your children tend to not be able to handle that. So her, the mother, not Sarah, the mother, you know, kind of went through a thing and the kids were in and out of care. They lived in an environment where people were constantly coming and going. There was weed, there was drugs, you know, it just wasn't a suitable situation for children, but they end up coming home to believe back into their like teenage years. Their mother ended up getting themselves, getting herself together and they end up coming back into her care which still was a dysfunction from what I have read in different articles. And their younger brother, Martin, he has basically expressed that these two individuals, Sarah and Brandon, were sick from the beginning. But he does say Sarah was not always like that. Sarah was very shy, she was protective, she was just a typical teenager, but when she got under the influence of Brandon. This is where she changed. She became a bully. She started fighting and just doing things to impress Brandon and Brandon was doing things to impress Sarah. And they even would torture Martin and the other siblings. Martin even recalls the times that he picked them up and just head butted him out of nowhere just to do, just to start drama and to fight with his sibling. They were also heavily involved in horror films. So I'm a horror fanatic. Like I love crime stuff and all of that, but I'm not trying to be out here killing people. Like I value life, you know, and I don't need, and I'm too cute to be in my jail. Hmm, got time for all that. But nonetheless, they were heavily involved in horror films. I mean like sanctic type videos and just different crime videos that you really shouldn't even be watching as a teenager but you know you watch it anyway and he also recalls how they would light mice on fire and they would just do really a lot of things to that they would just really do a lot of things that was not normal for a typical teenager whereas though they just basically showed signs that they were going to go down this dark sanctic route so they kept their secret of being together a secret for over 20 years from what I did read. There isn't anything to kind of pinpoint when exactly they became lovers far as sibling wise, but it does recall that in their teenage years, this is when the relationship began. And so fast forward, they're grown, you know, Sarah's 35, Brandon is 39. And what developed into this is 
as I was reading, Martin describes how he himself would call, you know, child services because when he would visit the home, he witnessed his nephews and nieces. They haven't really explained too much of the other four children, but mainly Blake and Tristan. They would talk, he would talk about how you know, he would grab Brandon by the arm, you know, and then drag him across the floor or they would just be in dirty clothes and the environment just wasn't as stable as people on the outside looking in perceived it to be because they set up this situation where it was like they were just a sister and a brother and the uncle came to assist her in taking care of those six children but that wasn't the reality of it the reality was he in fact was the father but they were keeping it a secret and they didn't want anyone to know and they got away with this for a very long time although child services was called martin states that he called child services three times within yeah, I think he said the article states that he called three times, but I'm really curious to know if there were more calls because they were called. But it was like child services was taking their sweet time when it came to that. But they did go to court. Sarah and Brandon did go to court and Brandon testified on behalf of Sarah as an uncle living in the home. And this is when Sarah basically developed a story of you know, I'm just a tired mom, you know, I need more assistance and stuff like that. So social services did in fact look into the situation, but this is where I felt like it was like time just stalled because they didn't really do enough to hurry up and get these children out of the home. So it was said that Sarah had reached out to local authorities and friends sending cryptic messages that she needed some type of assistant or she would kill these children. And honestly, to me, I feel like she set this up in motion from the beginning because law, not law enforcement, but social services had been in heavy contact with this family since, you know, she was a kid. But I think that they were beginning to catch on of Sarah and Brandon and I think she really freaked out when it came to them finding out about her. And I'm going to read the message that she sent. One message that she sent was, I thought of every possible solution to this mess. Mass murder, putting them all in care, checking into the local nut house. I love my kids too much to kill them. I can't put them into care for the same reason. And I think that she did this so that way she can try to probably plead insanity because she's either you know crazy or whatnot but and i really do think that she did this and when social services begins to ask her who in fact is the father of these children because they were curious to know <clears throat> she developed this sick plan and before she even killed the the two oldest teenagers she developed a plan of action to um, kill them by taking a tablet. And she forced these kids, all six of these kids, to take a tablet. And this tablet, I guess, was supposed to make them commit suicide. And it gets worse. She was on Facebook, guys, making all types of messages about killing. And like, I'm gonna post some of the things so you guys can see. One thing she posted is murder is like potato chips. You can't stop just one referencing Stephen King. She even and people even commented on this. Like some people were saying horribly foul. I hope this forensics go through comments. And then someone said, I hope they do, too. And then she posted another one with like the the um, oh, my God, the the person that comes and kills you when it's like you're about to die and it says coming for you and then she posted and she also was looking up different methods in order to kill these children and a lot of this was leading up to the death of Blake and Tristan so it's like if people seen this on social media why wouldn't they report it especially if but again outside looking in you're probably thinking oh this person is just posting these types of things but 
I don't know, some things that people post, I'm like, eh, and make your eyebrow go up. And then like, sometimes your gut is telling you that something is off. And what's crazy is because when she tried to poison the children, they didn't die. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Like she tried to poison these babies and God was like, eh, nope. And so then she develops another plan to speed up the process because this is when social services was pulling their ropes into coming to take these children. And I wish they would have moved so much more faster. So what they did is they strangled Blake and Tristan. They put a bag over their heads and they pulled it so tight so that they could not breathe anymore. It's truly sad because then I was reading that not only did they put these bags over these babies' heads, you strangle your own child with your own hand and then you use a cord for the other child and then you put the bag over their head to ensure that they would die. That is like beyond sick of the sick. Like regardless if you and her have an incest relationship, like that's your child regardless. And then not only did they do this to these two babies, they tried to drown one of the other kids, but thank heavens the child did not die. So Sarah tells police, so after you know they killed these babies, she phones the police, weirdo. And then she tells police that she, they were, you know, killing one of the sons and then the other son walked in and that's when the father killed, you know, killed him. And it's truly sad because these children did not know that their uncle was in fact their father. They have kept this secret for so long and hid it for so long. That's how they were able to keep it so intact because they played it very well. And you know, children are naive, even though they can be very intelligent at the same time, some children don't really put two and two together anyways. When police get to her home, she is barricaded in her room with the four other children. And when they asked where the other two children were, she said that these children were with neighbors, but that wasn't the truth. Nothing could have prepared these police officers for what they were about to witness. Blake and Tristan, were in their bunk beds and they were deceased. The younger children were able to kind of pinpoint that the children were in fact in the home. The younger brother, Martin Barrett, Barres, states that social workers should have done more because they were heavily involved in their family from for a long time, way before Sarah even had children. So he felt like the social services dropped the ball when it came to it. So Sarah and Brandon were sentenced to life with a minimum of 35 years. I really do pray they do not get out in no 35 years. They need to get the death penalty, if you ask me, for doing such a heinous crime to their own damn children. Because I want to read, you know, some of the things that they said. The younger children, the younger children state, I want to read um, the emotional toll that it has had on the surviving children. So I'm gonna read this from the computer, the laptop, whatever. So one of them said, they are worried they will become a murderer when they are older because that is what his mom and Brandon did. Another one said they are emotionally broken and don't know why this has happened. They would both want to know why and how. She revealed one of the other surviving children punches a big teddy bear to vent their frustrations. The court heard the oldest surviving children wanted their parents to go to prison for 300 years. Okay, I'm with baby, baby child over here. They repeatedly asked why and how. We don't have the answers. The, the older children are very much confused and don't know why. In a victim impact statement, one of the children who almost died in the bath described how both defendants tried to drown them and how they had to fight them off. The court doesn't like, mm. the child does not like baths anymore. The children are now being looked after by social services, a council worker said. They are safe in receiving good support through this traumatic time. I can't imagine being one of the surviving children and witnessing that madness, like in what that, will do to their brain and they are absolutely right you know the fears of harming someone else because of what you went through in your childhood but i can say that with 
therapy and you know people supporting them and loving on them I feel like they will have a great chance you know I really do pray that they can because that's just heartbreaking to even go through something like that but I hope they both rot in prison and I pray that these siblings can really move forward with their life and have a great life they deserve it especially after something so traumatic as such you know, I have no sympathy for a person who wants to kill their children when if you felt like you didn't want them to go to foster care, you know, you should have just given them up to someone, you know. I'd rather my child go, on that, go into that than to kill them if that's the case of me not being able to take care of them if they didn't have any family members. But you know, not everyone thinks of this and it's pretty really sick that they would even conspire to do such a thing or and, you know an act of such you know they both deserve to rot and they don't deserve to ever get out no 35 year minimum no they need to be in there for the remainder of their freaking life until they coke and choke <laughs> shoot it hurt my feelings listen reading this story i was like oh my god like i had to take a break in between because when it comes to children it's just something about babies like you don't harm babies, man. Like, come on. You know, like, ugh. Parenting is not easy, but you know what? Seeing their beautiful little faces makes my day, even when they irk a nerve, you know? But that is pretty much today's crime story. Sunday, guys. I hope you guys like this video. I know it's kind of dark and twisted, but these things do happen. And they happen almost every day. And this is just one of the cases that has hit the internet. So imagine how many children are currently being abused physically and sexually, you know, physically and mentally. I can only imagine, you know, and some people don't even realize that they're being mentally abusive. You know, the way you down talk your children, you know, and telling them what they, you know, in a mean way, like just not being a great parent pretty much, you know. So guys, I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.